What's up, everybody? It is Marcus D'Angelo, and we are live for the second episode of the Hawks Nest number two. Deuces, baby. And I'm joined, baby. <laughs> I'm joined by none not, other. Not, not, the, not the English deuces. That's something completely different. <laughs> Get that junk out of here. This is a straight up American USA deuces uh, episode two here. And I'm joined by the murder hawk monster himself, Lance Archer, AEW superstar. What's going on, brother? Oh. What's up? I'm glad everybody's back for the second episode. I hope more people are going to come back. Man, with any luck, it seems like there's a little bit of a lag, at least on my end. Are you getting any lag right now? Nope, not getting a lag. Somebody tried to call me. That's probably what caused it. Ah, okay. Fucking, hey, that's what you get when you go live, pal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we're excited to be here live. I do want to remind everybody that uh, we are going to be doing a Murder Hog mailbag, so that means that Lance is going to be answering fan questions that wrote in. However... If you forgot to write in, if you didn't get an opportunity, if you, if you didn't even know that this was happening, you just like jumped on all of a sudden, you can what still get your question in there, pal. And you can get it pushed to the top of the queue. All you got to do is hit us up in that super chat. Any price doesn't have to be like any specific amount. You could donate a buck and uh, all of a sudden your question's at the top of the queue. So go ahead and hit up that super chat. Give us a little support. Um, now, uh, before we get going, I do have to mention that. Coming up here soon, uh, a lot of people know I've been training in pro wrestling, Lance. I've talked to you about it. And the company that I've been working yeah. with here in Pittsburgh, International Wrestling Cartel, we've got a big show coming up, and you uh -oh. do not want to miss it. It is Super Indie 23. This is one of the best uh, independent wrestling brackets that you are going to see anywhere. And look at this. That's fucking Hooven 2 Guerrero, pal. That's uh, He's going to be there. The juice is going to be loose. Is gonna be loose. <laughs> You're going to see action in the ring. If you hang out after the show, you might see more action with this guy. I don't know what he's going to be doing. Uh, we've also got Elijah, formerly known as Elias, coming in. So, man. Is that another brother? Out. What's that? Is that another brother of him? <laughs> yeah, there's, so there's Ezekiel, Elias. This must be the third brother, Elijah. <laughs> Elijah, got, the same, got the same gimmick as Elias. Right. Um, but man, they're, twi they're twins. <laughs> some great stars, uh, including uh, the young upstart Kane and Christopher is going to be wrestling. Elijah Dean, Duke Davis. Man, there's so much talent over there. If you are not go uh, going to be able to make it here in Pittsburgh, by the way, uh, if you are in the Pittsburgh or the surrounding area, go out of your way to be there. If you can't be there, though, watch it on Fight TV. It's all watch going it. down October going down. 5th. October going 5th. down. All right, there's my plug. It's the only thing we're plugging right. today. Uh, and now, and now you, we can... Are you sure that's the only plug you got? <laughs> well, look, hey, Sorry. if somebody in the comments uh, throws enough money in that super chat, I'll put over anything you want, pal. Uh, oh, be, careful, be careful with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe not anything, uh, but I don't know. Money talks. Uh, all right, first up, we've got Peter D, who says, Hi. Oh. What up, Peter D? Hi. Uh, I love me some Peter D. He writes into all the shows that I do, and this one's no exception. You, with... you, you've walked yourself right into things. Plugs, and you love yourself some Peter D. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know about this, man. Things are, he's getting a lot here. You know? oh. Big Peter D guy over big, here. Big Peter D. You, get even, you, you just keep leveling up with this. It's okay. We no call judgment. him Big D. We call him no, Big yeah, D. Yeah, I, I bet you do. Calm down, Puff Daddy. <laughs> Oh man, P Diddy, what a what a mess that is! <laughs> uh, we'll do a P Diddy episode of the Hawks. Oh mess God, no, we will not. <laughs> oh, no, uh, we will not. Peter D, Big D wants to know about your fitness regimen. Uh, he asks, "What do you do to stay in shape? How long per day are you at the gym?" Uh, you know, I try to get to the gym pretty much every day that I can. I think you know anybody that's doing this business, the travel schedule can really mess with it. Sometimes it's really hard to motivate yourself, you know, to get to the gym. And the motivation is, well, if you don't, somebody else is, somebody else will, and somebody else will get past you. It's like everything else. And so I, I try to get in as much as I can. Um, you know, if I'm not on the road and I'm home and I have a good, you know, five days, I'll do five days in a row usually. Uh, and it's usually around an hour and a half, maybe two hours. That depends on, you know, what exercises, what body parts I'm hitting. Uh, am I adding cardio and, and ab work into the, to the workout regimen or do I have something that I need to get to and go do? But I usually don't spend much more than a two hour at tops uh, inside of a gym at any point. Um, you know, the travel thing, like the, one of the things that I've found that helps that is wherever you're going, you know, and obviously if it's crazy late or something like that, that's maybe a little bit different. But like if you get to someplace and it's a decent hour, if you just go straight there, 
Like you get to the hotel, you drop your stuff off, and if they've got a good hotel gym, you get that. Uh, and then sometimes that's your only option. So you go do whatever little cardio, and you do whatever little uh, dumbbells that they usually have into those little gyms and whatnot. And if you get to it and get it done, then you will do it. And a lot of times what I found is if you don't, that's when you won't. You know, a lot of times when I used to travel to Japan all the time, um, that would be the thing. Like I literally get off the plane after flying, you know, how many other hours, depending on where I was flying from, you know, 10, 12, 13 hours sometimes, depending where I was flying from. Um, and, you know, to catch a taxi to the hotel, which was another 34 minutes. But that's, you know, after getting through all the customs and picking up your bags and, you know, whatever the hour it takes you to get through all that stuff. And then getting in a taxi, getting in the hotel, getting checked in, getting changed, but then go straight to the gym. Because especially in that travel internationally, you're usually jet lagged. Uh, and if you sit down at all, especially if you eat anything, you're just done. There's, you're not getting up. You're, you gotta be a different kind of a beast and a monster to get there, sit down for a minute, eat something and then try to go. But like, I've always just found if I get there and I pound like a protein shake, I put my workout clothes on and I just get there, then I can actually get a workout in. If I don't, I'll be done. So it's try to get, you know, five to six days a week in the gym, separating the body parts hour and a half, two hours tops in a gym, um, you know, and that's if you have the time. And then, like I said, as you're traveling, the the key to me is to just once you get where you're going is go straight to the gym. Now, uh, the other thing that I w have, am always super impressed with is how guys are on the road and they can find ways to eat clean while, oh. while they're doing it and get all their protein. You, that's insane. Like you, you see guys you know, and you can tell like the dudes who are the body guys in this business, they're the ones who are really dialed in on that. Um, you know, and you'll see those guys, Brian Cage is my greatest example. Like he is the machine. He's the body guy of all body guys, you know, in, in modern wrestling, there's some guys that are right there with him and stuff like that. But he's just, he's a different element just with his ability and the way he does in the inside the ring. And then just the, the physical shape that he's keeps himself in has kept himself in as long as I know him, you know, he travels with his food. He's got it, you know, the portions, um, separated properly the macros the micros and the proteins and all the carbs and whatever one and you know he's got his carry-on that's got like you know six to eight meals in it ready to go and they're just meal prepped ready to go and throw them in a microwave if you got one or just eat them cold and get it going and it's staying on that regiment um you know or just being disciplined enough you know with the the mid body guys <laughs> i'll put myself in there where i don't travel with my food but if and when i get to the local restaurant or the hotel restaurant it's you know instead of splurging on the funkiest thing they have it, it's going all right what do you do you have steak do you have grilled chicken you know uh don't get the mashed potatoes but get the get the broccoli and maybe a little bit of rice or whatever you know trying to stay on point as much as you possibly can because it gets really hard because you get to some of these hotels that 12 30 night and there's nothing else open and the only thing you can uber eats is some mcdonald's or burger king well sometimes that's better than just absolutely nothing but at the same time you know even in that you know it's better to just eat a burger and then like cut like the sauces and stuff like that off of it like taking taking the ketchup off of it taking the mayonnaise off of it uh not eating fries you know having a water with it if you're disciplined enough to just have a water with your burger and you know, you can still get some, uh, you know, a decent amount of protein, not as many calories and avoiding the fries and all the sugary, you know, uh, condiments with the, the ketchups and mayonnaise and things like that. Um, and it can be done. It's hard. That's for damn sure. You know, not all of us are massive bodyguards, you know, uh, body guys. One of the guys who he was in AEW, um, he still wrestles some, but he has become kind of the wrestler's uh nutritionist and uh, trainer and things like that. C Cesar Bona Bonani. I, 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 Cesar, oh, yeah. I'm, so, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name right now. And if you're hearing this or if somebody <laughs> tells you, I know it's Cesar, but uh, your last names, you're killing me, brother, but he looks fan freaking tastic. And a lot of the wrestlers, AEW, WWE, there are people that are going to him now. And when you're seeing these transformations they're making, um, he's, he's got it dialed in. He's got a, an app for these guys and girls um, it helps keep them on track he, he can, they can message him directly through the app and he can tell them, yes, you can eat that. No, you can't eat that. Um, and he's very on top of it. So if anybody's out there, whether you're a wrestler or you're just a, just a person who wants to get yourself in shape and you don't know how to do it, Cesar is the guy, he's the guy to hit up. He can help you. And, and it's amazing. 
Dude is an absolute beast. And while we are talking about fitness, I do want to ask you, uh, have you ever tried DDP Yoga, Dallas's program? No, I have not. Um, it, it's one of those things where I've talked to Paige uh, all years ago. You know, he gave me a DVD package. Um, I may have turned it on one and I'm stubborn. And um, uh, it's something I definitely need to get into with my seasoned age that I carry. Um, but, yeah, it's not something that I've gotten into. Um, but I, I should. I really should. Sorry, Paige. I love you. <laughs> man a lot of guys say that it's like the fountain of youth like yeah. when you start to break up that scar tissue in your muscle and whatnot yeah. and all of a sudden it's like wow i don't feel like shit trying to get out of bed this morning <laughs> yeah I know, I, i'm pretty sure like you know there's so many guys that have done it you know but i think uh, aj styles you know when he he was dealing with a lot of injuries at one point he got into it and i think he he, he swears by it you know in his in his country non-swearing way uh he's like man in my dead diamond Dallas page he's great man uh, but it helped him tremendously. And, you know, you can see him when he's on now and he's in some of the best shape of his life. He looks incredible. And the next yeah. question is about a guy that you just mentioned who looks incredible as a matter okay. of fact, okay. uh, in- Instagram, a wrestling historian asks, how do we make Brian cage versus Lance Archer happen? That's a match <laughs> we need to see. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to answer that question. Um, you know, I, we've, we've wrestled each other a few times, uh, on independent scene and things like that. And here's a fun fact about Cage and I. So um, I don't, we didn't really get into it the last time because we were talking about the early years of my wrestling career. Um, but when I was leaving TNA, which this was 2009, uh, I had my tryout with WWE and they still, their, their developmental system was down in Tampa, Florida at SCW. Um, you know, and I finished up my time at TNA and co- had my contract, uh, null and voided. And like in that same week that I taped my final episode with TNA's impact wrestling, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, I stayed in Florida and I went down to Tampa and they had me do run through a rampant of tryout uh, scenarios. I'm sorry. My words are kind of all over the place here. So basically I I went in and I think it was more of an attitude check. It was one of those things where they dealt with some guys that had come with from TNA before um, and had come in kind of, with big egos and thought they were, you know, thought their shape don't stink, man. Um, and so they were trying to test me. They were trying to check me. And one of the guys that I had to run my tryout match in Tampa, you know, and this was pre COVID, but we're wrestling. I was wrestling in front of nobody. Cause it was a, basically it was a private tryout. Um, it was just like Dr. Tom Pritchard and uh, uh, Dusty Rhodes and Norman Smiley and guys like that, that were down there doing the training um, oh. And they, they had me run two singles matches and a tag match. And one of the singles matches was Brian Cage. And I'd never met him to that point, um, but it, it was really good, you know. And it, so he helped me get a job there. So I've known Cage for a while. I've known Cage for a while. He so, always reminds me of, like, if Ultimate Warrior was also a freak athlete. Like, he's got the great right, body, but he can right. do all that crazy stuff. Absolutely. And, you know, that comes from, you know, when he he learned to do all that stuff, he's always been in phenomenal shape. Like when I'm talking about that trial in Tampa, Florida at FCW way back in 2009, um, he wasn't as thick as he is now, but he was always in great shape and his ability to do all those things was already there. So as he got bigger, as he got more muscular, as he got thicker, um, he was able to adapt that to his style. He didn't have to lose any of his athletic ability because as he grew he brought it with him um so it wasn't like you know and that's the thing is like i think you see a lot of the big impressive muscle bound dudes and they can't do a lot of the athletic things because they've just always been big and muscular massive human beings they haven't been athletes like you said cage was an athlete who got to be uh, uh the machine that he is today so he was able to bring that athleticism with him into his character and his ability Granted, if and when that match ever happens, I'm gonna choke slam him through the damn mat. But you know, <laughs> he, he's gonna he he's gonna get his his GMSI get my shit in, and he's gonna get his in. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna get his ass beat. Is what's gonna happen. Right? You ever you ever see Training Day? Uh, I have. Boy, it's been a while though. You, uh, you know, when they were the uh, they had Officer Hoyt, which that's a funny uh, coincidence there. Uh, oh, Officer Hoyt was getting uh, uh, betrayed by uh, Denzel's character, and he left him at the the Cholo spot. And they were asking, "You ever heard your shit?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was 
That was a horrible, horrible, horrible uh, impersonation. But yeah, that's, was... what, that's what's going to happen to you, Brian Cage, when the when the Murderhawk <laughs> monster faces off with the machine. Man, uh, I've not heard that reference yet. Is a way to intimidate your opponent, but I'm here for it. That's, well, that's, hey, I, I would be hey, intimidated. If somebody tells you that, you should be intimidated. <laughs> One million percent intimidated over here. Uh, hey, want to remind everybody, if you're just joining us, you can push your question to the top of the queue when you hit that super chat. But you know what? This one is not super chat. I couldn't pass it up, though. I like the question. We've Uh-oh. got Machete Von Kill, uh, <laughs> who great. has a great wrestling name. I hope you're a wrestler and that's what you're going by. Um, <laughs> they ask, when will we get to see more murder sauce? Uh, you and Alex Zane make a killer tag team. Well, first off, Machete, uh, it's not murder sauce. It's monster sauce. So you get that uh, shit out of here, Machete. So you, your Machete, you're gonna have your <laughs> pushed in. Um. <laughs> I want this to be a thing on our show. Moving <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> Please, nobody make a gif out of it either. Um, yeah, I don't know. That you, the, I love these questions. It's so hard to answer because that's so out of my control. Yeah, you, know, you want to know when Brian K, when the monster, the Murdoch monster, and the machine are gonna fight? Don't know. I don't book this shit. Um, when is monster? When are you gonna see more monster sauce? I don't know. I don't book this shit, um, and uh, that's part of the problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then again, you know, you don't don't hand me the book because then I I will be war champion and then it will be WCW. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we we were hoping to be a part of more stuff. We I think the last time we did anything together was uh, GCW. Um, it would be great to do more. Uh, whether it's GCW. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. We appeared together at the ROH pay-per-view uh, where, you know, it was the trios with him, myself, and, and uh, Minoru Suzuki. Um, and we took on the Bang Bang Gang at the time, who were the trios champions. So that was the last time we actually made an appearance together. So, you know, yeah, we would love for it to happen more often. Um, I would love for it to happen at AEW. We would love to make more appearances in, in New Japan because that's where we kind of were born as a team. Uh, but again, I don't book this shit, so I don't know. <laughs> so well, when when the Murder Hog Monsters number is called, he'll be ready. Yeah, that's how it's always been. Uh, Aisha is up next. What do you what like up, to do, Aisha? Your... Aisha, thank you for the question. She asks, "What do you like to do in your spare time when you're not wrestling? What do you do when you have some time off?" I love going to movies. Whether it's, oh. and, and I go, I'll go by myself all the time. I don't care. Like so a lot of people, are like, oh man, that's weird. Why would you go by yourself? It's like because I want to go see the damn movie. And if nobody else is around that actually wants to see the movie, when I want to see the movie, I'm going to go see the movie. Um, you know, I, I, got, I saw the Alien uh, uh, Romulus. That was really cool. I thought it was a good installation to the whole um, uh, Alien franchise. Obviously, I enjoyed, like, the action movies. Went and saw the Deadpool Wolverine, like everybody else in the world. Um, so you're, you're welcome, Ryan Reynolds, for helping you make that a success. Um, and Hugh Jackman, you know, you were, I think you talked to Cesar or something cause you look pretty jacked. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing the new Transformers one. Um, I have hearing such amazing things about it. The thing is I saw the original Transformers, the movie in the early eighties or the mid eighties. Um, and I still think it's the best cartoon movie. One of the best movies overall that has ever existed. So for this to possibly top it, I'm very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Skeptical. Uh, skeptical. There you go. Skeptical that it can, but I keep hearing nothing but great things like other friends that are true Transformers fans. They love that original movie. Like I did. Um, they're telling me that it's awesome, that it's there, that it's, it's kind of to the lore of what Transformers was and is and should be. Um, so I'm interested in seeing that. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm disappointed. I never got to see the the new crow movie, but I've heard nothing but negative things about it. So it really turned me off to the IFC idea of seeing it. And I really enjoyed the original, um, you know, so that's kind of one of those things that I like to do is either that or I get out of my, uh, my, my Harley and, and go for a ride. Sounds awesome. And by the way, Aisha, great question. Aisha's in here with us right now too. So, uh, thank you for the question, Aisha. Yeah. Thank you, Aisha. Um, next up, uh, let's go ahead and I, I got to address this one. Taylor okay. Shays Green says such a Transformers mark and Matt, <laughs> Maddie points out uh, that you are a true nerd at your core. What other nerd stuff? I, I guess it's considered nerd stuff. I like Transformers, but uh-huh. and I don't think it's nerdy, but okay. uh, what, what other nerd stuff are you into? Did, did Taylor ask that or is that you're just your interpretation? Uh, 
Uh, that's Maddie. Well, uh, Maddie's saying that you're a true nerd at core. So I'm like, well, okay. now I'm wondering what other like nerd culture, pop culture things are you into? What is can that? You, can Hang you on. see that? Oh. Uh, is that the oh uh, start? I thought you were doing the Superfly thing. I was like, no, 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 no. There, <laughs> there you go. Star Trek. I'm a Trekkie, baby. I'm a are Trekkie. you really? Yeah, we we kick Star Wars' ass, especially the most recent versions of whatever the crap Disney is putting out. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, tre- so don't they have like a language or something? The Trekkies? Is that a Trekkies? No, Trekkies don't. But I think you're trying to think of Klingons. <laughs> I, 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 I cannot I cannot speak Klingon. I'm not that deep into it, but <laughs> I, I enjoy all the Trek movies. Uh, I, I liked the Chris Pine trilogy that existed, Jack Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto and those guys. Uh, you know, even the last one that wasn't the greatest, but it was still a lot of fun. There was like there's there's been so many rumors about like the next version of it or the fourth film in that franchise. Um, and I think at one point Quentin Tarantino was on board to film like an R-rated version, which I thought was be the absolute most tremendous thing in the world if he was able to take like the Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto and that whole cast and crew uh, of, of Captain Kirk and whatnot. And film a Quentin Tarantino style Star Trek movie. I imagine that. I can't, but that would be tremendous beyond understanding or expectation, I think. But I think it completely fell through and it's not going to happen. I think they are working on a fourth installment. Um, you know, there was a Paramount Plus series called Star Trek Discovery, which I watched the first few seasons. I thought it was really good. There was a, a Picard series. The first two seasons were fine. Um, you know, it had uh, Patrick Stewart and uh, he, he reprised his role as uh, Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Um, the third and final season they did was really like, it was tremendous because it was kind of a true send off to the next generation uh, Star Trek that, you know, Picard and all those uh, characters were part of uh, it, it. That TV series had its own finale, but it was a weird kind of ending or whatever. And this kind of brought, all the original cast together and created a moment that really like solidified an ending to like that cast and crew and that whole genre. It was a really cool moment. So, now, all yeah. I, now all I can think about is the Tarantino over it's that, that I know, like alternate right? reality shit. <laughs> no, it wasn't. That was the thing. It wasn't supposed to be an alternate reality. They were going to use Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto and that whole cast and crew. He was just going to film an R rated version of his idea of what the Star Trek universe could be. Holy shit. Yeah, I was like, that would have been really freaking cool. So yeah, those you know, I'm a, that that's kind of my that's where my my nerdum kind of falls off right there. It's just with the Trekkie stuff and Transformer stuff. You know, I don't, I've never been a gamer. Um, so you know, there's a lot of guys and girls that are really into games. Um, I sometimes wish I was and could be because of all the trips like to Japan and all the you know downtime that I had in the hotel rooms and things like that. But I just my attention span to play video games is beyond short. Really? So it's like a lot of guys get really deep into like the storylines and stuff like that. You just couldn't get into it. No, I'm not, I mean, I never even try to play it. I don't own a system. Uh, one of my friends, Leo, he, he gave me like a, a maybe a PS3 or something like that. And it was just so I could play Tekken. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I, it doesn't work anymore and I haven't played in forever. So, yeah, I've just never really gotten into it. And uh, you brought up Taylor a little while ago, Taylor. And uh, he's actually the guy who created, he's got his own band or he's a part of a band called Motor League. Um, and it wasn't really Motor League that, that made the, the song, but he did. Um, my, my song, Everybody Dies, he's the oh. one that wrote it, put it together, and, and he's the one that created it for me. Taylor, welcome. That's so cool. Wow. Yeah. I had yeah. a, a celebrity in here. Uh, yeah, so the if, there's any, if there's any asp- aspiring wrestlers out there that want their own custom music, Taylor can hook you up, man. Holy shit. All right. That's yeah. Taylor Shays Green, folks. If you are yeah. looking for any yeah. music, check it so out. So Marcus, there you go. All right. It's I'm I'll tell you what, might take it might take him up on it. I'm looking at like Rage Against the Machine. They always get me like feeling up. Like I wanna to go he, fight he, a motherfucker. He yeah, he can create anything. Actually the fun and here's another thing. So he created Everybody Dies. Um it was a sponsored song. So the sponsor had a lot of influence into how he wanted to sound, which a lot of people <laughs> say it sounds like Bon Jovi stuff. Um, so, and I think that's where the influence came from, which I, I it's fine. I really like it. Uh, I, so I, my first batch of COVID way back in 2020, when everybody thought we were just going to drop dead from it. 
um, I was driving back home um, and he and I just through communications created this new song called the murder Hawk March. Um, and it's still out there. It's still available. You can download it, listen to it and have fun with it. Um, I used it like a couple brief times on AEW. Um, and then, you know, we switched back to the everybody dies. Um, and it's also an AEW video game, which I thought was random and weird, but it, that's the song that I, they used when in the video game, when I come out. You know, you just mentioned that you don't play video games, and now you've said that you're on the video game, and you've like right. reminded me of that. So mm-hmm. you, have you ever played as yourself on a video game? Yeah, for about five minutes. And that was enough for you? I, I played a little bit of my... Uh, I played with myself. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to Peter D. Yeah, Peter D, there you go. <laughs> and the plugs that you want. Um, <laughs> so when Raw vs. SmackDown 2011 had come out, I, I played a few times as myself, as the Vance Archer character on that game. And then when the AEW game came out, actually, the one and only time that I've actually had a real chance to play it was... Uh, one of my friends in Japan, uh, he wanted it for his, uh, uh, the handheld PS PlayStation. Okay. Sorry. What is it well, called? Honestly, I'm not a huge gamer either. I have, I have like an old <laughs> Xbox 360 that I play. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. So the man. handheld <laughs> PS whatever. Yeah, yeah. So he, he was like, oh, you can't get it in Japan yet. Can you get it for me and bring it with, with you when you come? Because at that point, I was getting ready to go back to Japan. And so, yeah, sure enough, like I went to like five stores because they had very few, I guess, hard copies and the few hard copies in all the stores were sold out really quick uh, because a lot of the stuff was all downloaded and whatnot. Um, So I found one and I was able to take it to him. And so when I met up with him and he put it into his little gaming system, his console or whatever, uh, and I sat there and played as Lance Archer, the Murderhawk monster for a little bit. And uh, I was like, yeah, that's cool, cool. I handed it back to him. (laughs) Uh, so I feel like if I was on a video game, I would play that video game all the time. So the fact that you don't <laughs> means that you really are not a gamer. <laughs> like, no, it's not your thing. No, like and I love the game of football, and like it, I, I just like I'll start playing a game, and I you know I get a quarter or two into it. And, you know, most football games on video games aren't like true like fifteen minute quarters where you're playing for three hours in a game. You know, it's condensed so that you're playing. You know, one game is maybe 30 minutes or an hour or whatever the case may be. And mm-hmm. I, I just I can't do it, man. I'm like, oh, this is great. Whether I'm winning or losing, I'm just like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Interesting. It's yeah. uh, especially because it has become such a big part of wrestling culture. We hear that, you know, back in the day, it was the guys were always like going out uh, at yeah. night and getting into trouble. And now yeah. it's like, you know, they just hang out and play video games and get drunk yeah. in a hotel room or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, I'm, I'm, pretty good friends with chase owens who's a you know a, a staple with the new with new japan um and he's a big gamer and he you know has his traveling system that he carries with him and i remember when aj was traveling to japan all the time like he had one of the, it was one of his full-on carry-ons but it was a full gaming system you could open it up and play whatever game while we were on the trains or on the buses or wherever they were at obviously in the hotel rooms and stuff like that and i was like that's some dedication that's cool but i couldn't do it uh, next up, we're going to do one from Jimmy Corona, if that is your real name. Uh, well, Jimmy Corona. His question is, question, is it wrong to want you to start beating people with said mailbag during your entrance in matches? <laughs> <laughs> Lance, well, what, it, what if it, they pitch you a, a big, uh-huh. dangerous mailman gimmick? Would you go for that? <laughs> uh, well, am I going to get more TV time than I am now? Sure, why not? <laughs> that's, 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 that's how the uh, rock and rave thing came about, man. Uh, you know, I can tell that story now, or we can save it for another episode, but that's basically how it came about was like, Hey, you're going to do this. And we literally went cool. Do we have more TV time? And they went, yeah, you're on like three episodes, backstage segments, um, live mic time. And we went, all right, let's roll. <laughs> and we're in. Yep. Honestly, that's the right attitude. Like, uh, something that gets brought up on my shows. Cause like I have three guys, uh, that, that were, uh, you know, active during the golden era of wrestling. So like eighties and nineties. Right jake ted and hacksaw right and the question always comes up on every show uh or every ask you know jim or ask jake right. everybody says uh hey what did you think about the red rooster gimmick and really the only correct answer is like you gotta just own it right if they give yeah. you a gimmick and they're gonna put you on tv you gotta just put your heart and soul into it y- y- yes you can uh there's been a lot of people that have been given gimmicks and or told they were gonna have gimmicks and said no and some people probably made the right choice at the right times but you know i mean 
the business as a whole, it's harder now because as soon as you do one thing, it, it's almost impossible to escape that. Yeah. Um, because everything is documented, everything is online, everything is, you know, being filmed and, and produced. And so it's like, once you're kind of into that element, whatever it is, character wise, it's pretty damn hard um, to, to not be that anymore. I mean, um, Elijah, he, he's, he's a great example. He was Elias, obviously, when he was in WWE, and they switched his to his brother or whatever, where, you know, the shaved face and all that stuff. And he tr- tremendously did well at in essence being a different person but nobody really bought it because they knew who he was like they couldn't escape what he they'd really originally created even as good as he was doing being the other character so it it, this day and age it's much harder i think you know you think of some of the the biggest names in the business whether you're talking about stone cold steve austin uh kane uh, kevin nash all these guys they went through n- numerous gimmicks that you can find. Like if you can go back and look Oz or you can look up, uh, was it Dr. Yankum that, that Kane was before <laughs> you can find it, but it's not like it is today where like it, it happened, they stopped it and they were able to move on from it kind of seamlessly. And they obviously did amazing things with what they ultimately got to, um, and that helps because they got over in their final form, whether it was, like I said, just Diesel, Kevin Nash. But, you know, even Diesel, uh, I, I think, got eclipsed by who Kevin Nash became with the whole NWO and when he was just being himself. And, yeah. um, you know, and, and Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was, you know, stunning Steve Austin in the WCW era and even what he was doing when he was in ECW, which helped kind of launch the, what Stone Cold became, you know, because when you say Stone Cold, you only think of Stone Cold Steve Austin. But he went through evolutions throughout his time and uh, as to get where he got. And I think because of the era, even though most of that stuff was on TV, it wasn't just so easily accessible as it is now all the time. And so I think it's harder to move past kind of a gimmick. You know, I've done several in my time in the business and, you know, with the Murder Hawk monster being what it is. Um, and what it could be, it's still one of those things. Like I still have people all the time that bring up the rock and rave infection, um, you know, and they go, Oh man, that was my favorite thing. Or, Oh man, that was crazy or whatever it was. And that's how they kind of see me. So, you know, it, it's, it's hard to kind of get past old and bad gimmicks. So some people probably said no. And like I said, smartly so, but to a degree, like you said earlier, a lot of times it's like, all right, this is where we're at. This is what we're doing. All right, let's see if I can make it the best I can make it. Yeah, it's honestly, uh, especially nowadays, it feels like you're not really in a position to negotiate a lot of the time. It's like there's right. really only so many options to go places and get big money. Right. So it's like, hey, just shut up and do what they want and try right. try to make it as great as you can. Yeah. Uh, all that being said, if you got pitched like a doink gimmick, do you think you could pull <laughs> that off? A doink the clown gimmick? No, I yeah. couldn't pull that. It'd be... It'd, it'd be. <laughs> It would either it would either be so bad that I would disappear within a week or so, or it would be so horribly horribly awesome that it would actually get over. I don't know. It's one of those things. Like it, I might actually at this point in my life and career go. No, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. Well, Tony Khan is in the chat. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tony, a clown gimmick for Lance. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see now. Next up, we've got David Gowers, who asks, uh, well, he says, Loki did an interview recently and mm-hmm. buried a lot of people. Wondering what your experiences <laughs> were like around him. Did he bury me? I I don't know. I didn't actually. <laughs> I know that he was on that Cafe de Rene uh, right. podcast. So, uh-huh. yeah, uh, but I, I didn't watch it. So right. I don't, did you have heat with him? <laughs> no, no, that would be that's why it would be a surprise. Like we've always actually gotten along really well. Um, my fun original story of kind of really meeting him was when I first, my first, first time in TNA, when they first stuck me with Kid Cash, um, we filmed, uh, their, they did like a tag league tournament. Like I got paired with Kid Cash, did well. They were kind of thrown aback as to how well I did and offered me a deal with the company. And I think that maybe changed what they maybe even originally planned for the tag league tournament. So they ultimately put uh, him and I over, they put cash and I over and we beat uh, Christopher Daniels and Loki. And I remember, I didn't know Loki at all. I kind of knew the a little bit of lore lore that was Loki, you know, and Loki's always a very straightforward, no BS uh ask his ask kicking dude um and we were filming something backstage and i remember like 
I think he saw that I was kind of tense and, and was worried about things or whatever. And like, in the, we're in the middle of filming and none of it's live. So it's just filmed. And like, he ran up and like jumped into my lap, like a little child, and, like put his arms around my neck and was <laughs> just saying some goofy stuff. And it was all to try to, you know, knock the tension out of me and, and have me relax and, and be able to cut whatever promo that was necessary. So it was a really cool kind of moment, you know, and then we had the match that we had and he busted his ass to make me look like a, a monster. And um, again, we, he and I have never had a bad relationship, whether it was there or in Japan or wherever, we always had good rapport when I saw him or we'd see each other. It was always like very like, Hey man, what's up? And we'd have like a conversation. And whatnot. So I jokingly said, did he bury me? Cause I doubt it, you know, uh, just because we never had any issue. Uh, yeah. It's like polarizing guy, but Holy shit. You, you look at some of that guy's film and you're like, what a freaking talent. Like it's a guy like yeah. that. I, I feel like it, if he had started in wrestling, maybe 10 years later and possibly dialed back some of uh, his open opinions, boy, uh, could have been a monster superstar. Right. Um, I got to address one of these things that was said Uh-oh. here. Here we go. Okay. CB wrote in and said, Lance, my friend jumped into the ring and woke up five hours later. That's terrible for your brain. Woke up five hours later because the wrestlers beat the shit out of him for doing it. And that makes me wonder, Lance. Uh, that's not really a question, so I'll, I'll turn it into one. Uh, did a fan ever jump in the ring when you were in there? So uh, I'm kind of, what? <laughs> it came yeah. out of fits. He like he just jumped in, not with a question. He's like telling us a story. About so his, his, friend. his friend was a fan that jumped into the ring? Jumped in the ring, woke up five hours after getting the shit beat out of him by a bunch of wrestlers. Like, it, honestly, though, that's like a minor coma. Like, your friend probably has uh, some brain damage to a degree. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, it makes me wonder, Lance. Did any, right. any fan ever jump into the ring with you? No, I've never had. I mean, I've had fans, like, excuse me. I've had fans, like, at the fence lines and whatnot act like they were tough guys and act like they were going to come on over the fence. But, you know, again, I think my size – prevents most people from wanting to test that theory even if they think they can kick my ass they know that they're probably going to get hit at some point uh, and don't want to be hit um so no i've never actually had anybody jump the fence um my I, you know i i feel bad for the dude that that happened to him that sucks but when you jump the fence we don't know what's happening we don't know and i it's unfortunately it's happened where people have legitimately tried to attack uh, a, a fan or excuse me a, a wrestler you know thinking it's real or they're drunk or whatever the case is and you don't know if that person is coming in with some kind of true weapon uh, and is going to really try to hurt you thinking they're super tough or they're super drunk and they don't know what they're doing so the fact that this person thought it was a good idea to jump the, the rail and and enter the ring with guys who you know many are legitimate tough guys you know we're playing characters and things of that nature, but yeah, want to jump in the ring and test that theory. Did they go too far and how they handled it as far as the wrestlers to the fan? Maybe I wasn't there. I don't know. Um, but you jump the fence, man. If the, if the police don't get you and get you out of there, if you get in the ring, then you've chosen your path. And unfortunately you have to deal with it. Like, again, I don't necessarily condone how far it seemed to have gone, um, and maybe somebody should have been there to stop that aspect of it. But at the same time, you're not supposed to jump the rail. You're not, that's the reason it's there. It's not there just for us to be thrown into and, and <laughs> do moves on and things of that nature. It's there to separate the fans from the performance and the performers. And if you choose to jump into that, uh, uh, that stage unannounced and unwelcomed, then you take a chance of getting your ass beat thing is that like if you are in wrestling yes it's predetermined fighting however a lot of it fucking hurts so you have to be a very uh, <laughs> oh i'm sorry I had K-fabe, K-fabe. <laughs> but like it's a lot of it a lot of it fucking hurts so you have to be a tough human being to be yeah. in wrestling yeah uh, so so that means if your friend jumps in there like first of all you jump in there with somebody who's tough second of all you're like even if you yeah. can beat the shit out of the guy in like a street fight you're at a disadvantage because you're coming into a ring you have to stick your head through the ropes. You got to like yeah. go into the bottom. Like you're just going to get knocked out. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're doing it unannounced and by surprise. So again, the people in the ring who are doing the performance in whatever capacity that they're performing, don't know why that person is there and entering the ring. And so then you put them in a defensive mode. And again, it, it, 
the, the person that jumped the rail ultimately created a, a situation where whoever was in the ring was defending themselves. Now, again, I don't know, did it go too far once that defense turned into offense? That's, again, a whole other scenario, story, and, and situation. I'm sorry that that happened to that person. That really sucks. Uh, but, again, they chose to jump in there, and therefore the people – involved in the performance had no idea that's just yeah uh cb is saying that this happened in an old ecw show so there's a bunch of degenerates in that ring just beating the shit out of this guy i'm sure oh man uh that's uh it's hard not time. the first time it's happened and probably won't be the last <laughs> no no i'm certain it'll happen again sometime yeah. uh, stay out of the ring though pro tip for you folks out yeah. there do not jump that that real we um, are professionals <laughs> yes. do not try this at home or in our ring yeah it's uh it's just a bad idea overall uh, Gold, Golden Hoboken, I think is how you say it, asks... Say, I, say I, what? I guess their name is Golden Hoboken, like Hoboken. Golden Hoboken? Oh, oh yeah. is, that a, is that a place? It is. It's like close okay. to New York. I, don't, I assume yeah. that that's... I don't know. It's weird spelling. Uh, yeah. They ask, I see where you worked with Dusty Rhodes earlier in your career. Uh, what was it like working with him? A bunch of times. It was great. You know, um, he was at TNA. He was the head booker for a while there. And, you know, he was he was very instrumental when I got my job at WWE in their developmental system because he was the head uh, creative in FCW at the time. Um, so he was a very influential. And that's just the base story. I, I have a fun story. <laughs> This is a bunch of fun stories with Dusty. Um, one of the fun stories was, so Dusty's, you know, um, I had three different names while I was in TNA. I started out as Dallas, then I was Lance Hoyt, and I finished up as Lance Rock. When I was Dallas going into my Lance Hoyt phase, um, I don't know the specific reason, you know, why it was changed. It just, like, I showed up, like, actually, I hadn't been used in a while, um, and I decided to take myself to Orlando to try to figure out what was going on. Um, and one of the things that was said to me, and this was by Dusty, was that they were going to change my name from Dallas to Lance Hoyt and have me use my real name, which that's my real name. And so I remember I went to Dusty and I was like, listen, Dusty, I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, if that's what you guys want to do and you think it's best, that's cool. Um, I was like, can I be the one that introduces it? Can I go and have a promo segment, whether it's done backstage or it's done live and it's based, the basic premise is, you know, Dallas was not me. That was a character. That was a gimmick. That wasn't real. The real me is Lance Hoyt. And from now on, you're going to get the real Lance Hoyt from here on out, blah, 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 something to that effect. And Dusty was like, yeah, Lance, that's, that's, that's good, Lance. But, uh, you know, if you were selling out 20,000 seat arenas, that'd be real good, but you're not. So we're just, we're just going to do it subtly, baby. Just kid cats are going to say, he's going to say, hey, this is Lance Hoyt. Uh, it's a good wrestling name. And then you're just going to be Lance Hoyt from there. And we're going to go on running. So, uh, yeah, that was a good idea. But, no, we're not going to do it like that. And that was it. I was like, all right. So I am back on TV. And he goes, yes. Yeah. And I said, all right, let's go, Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I read this question ahead of time, I was like, uh, Lance does a tremendous Vince uh, impression, a great John Laurinaitis impression. Wonder if he can do a uh, Dusty. And there's your answer, <laughs> folks. Dusty, wait. Is this kid got any? You got to get him. Any potential? Yes, we're gonna we're gonna break him down and build him up. Listen, baby, he's he's got some potential, and I see something in him. He's gonna be a big, big star. Maybe not as big as me, but he's gonna be a big star. Oh man, master of impressions, yes. Lance Archer. Yes, <laughs> love it, pal. Love it. <laughs> Oh, incredible. All right, we got to find more impressions that you do. Don't spoil them. I want to find them as we go here along the show. Uh, <laughs> speaking of the show, uh, we're going to do one more, and then we're going to wrap this one up. However, all right. let me point out to those of what you in doing? the chat that uh, if you do a, a super chat, I almost said do-do, if you do do a super chat. You are just um, on a roll with this stuff tonight, man. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm a mess. Tonight. Plugs, doo -doo. What the hell, man? <laughs> it's because uh, my Cowboys lost. So we're auditioning for new co-hosts out there, ladies and gentlemen. Marcus <laughs> yeah, has right. lost his mind, so we're just not doing completely this bombed tonight. Just uh, gone. <laughs> if, if this was a live show, the big cane would have come out and drugged me off. Oh my god. Um. So I'm going to read a question that we have here already. However, can, can if, you read? <laughs> so we'll, we're about to find out. All right. Uh, however, if you guys do a super chat, we'll hang in there a little bit longer and answer those questions. Any price, your last chance to do the super chat. Here's the final question that we have for right now, though. Another weird name. So uh, here we go. Let's do it. What is it? What is it? What is it? It appears to be Nujex Tolu Tulo. 
What? New Jex? New oh, New Jex, like J E X. New Jex, yeah, N U G E X. New Jex. Tolu, but again, the spelling is weird. They're using like numbers and shit. I don't know what's going on with this person. Oh, yes, silly gamers. <laughs> they do have a great question though. Uh, what's this question? J Jex Tolu. <laughs> New Jex Tolu, bring in the fire. Yeah, something. The, the question is: Were you there when Teddy Hart fought CM Punk and C in TNA? Nope, that was before me. I, I heard all about it. It was at the White Trash Cafe, which is a real cafe. Uh, it was like down the hill from the old asylum, and we all got like lunch tickets and we'd go down there and it, you know there'd be you know 40 or 50 wrestlers in this tiny little building eating food that they'd prepared they, i think it was like a real cafe that you know actually served regular people on a regular basis and they just worked out a deal with them to be our catering uh while we were there and uh no i was not um um no i was not so that's unfortunate that i don't have more to that that's okay i'm not done asking about <laughs> teddy Hart yet because he's fascinating oh, lord have mercy <laughs> <I don't, laughs> However, before we do, uh, Maddie has submitted a two dollar super chat. So thank uh -oh. you for that, Maddie. Is, this, is Maddie spelled differently, or it's just Maddie? <laughs> no, it's 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 our dude, Maddie. He's been in the chat the whole time. Oh, okay. Technically, his full name, his uh, his the his God given name is Maddie, Mister Marijuana. Okay, um, yeah. So <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure God had a name in that one. No. Um, and he says, Vince and Dusty arguing over the last Pop-Tart. I don't know if he's asking for an impression or if he's just. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, baby, that's, that's my terrible Pop-Tart. It's going to be mine. I'm going to put it in. It's going to get toasted. It's going to pop up. And it's going to be delicious. No, it's mine. I bought it. It's mine. <laughs> Nobody can have it. Always going to be. Yes, it's going to be mine. Listen. Vince, uh, we can share this pop tart. There's two in a package. I get one and you get one. No, yes! I buy both of them. I want both of them. And if I can't have them, nobody can have them. Maddie, you just got your two dollars worth, pal. That's what yeah. you get when you hit the super chat, folks. Uh, yeah. so we we hung in there just for that one. Um, and do before we do go, I do have to ask about Teddy Hardy. Not sure how oh, we're talk about this, this maniac. Have you been around him very often? You're trying to get me in trouble, man. You're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> You're trying to get me in trouble, man. Uh, like he might come after you uh, in person next time you see you. Gonna, he's going to throw a damn cat at me? What the hell? Is, <laughs> is, he, is he in jail still? I don't know what's going on. Um, listen, I I don't have a very good opinion of Teddy Hart. I don't have any direct problems with him. I've just seen what he has done. And just so I know a lot of the people he's done them to. And I just, I have very, there's very few people that I don't have a lot of respect for. And unfortunately, he's one of them. Like I said, nothing directly at me or to me as far as I know. I just, again, I've seen firsthand a lot of the just ridiculous insanity that he's done. And uh, I don't respect it. And so, therefore... I appreciate no. the honesty because uh, well, that was that was a calm version. So mm. <laughs> that was good stuff. And by the way, yes. I didn't really know. Very much about, <laughs> I didn't know very much about Teddy Hart, but not very long ago, I saw a documentary about him. Oh, Are you familiar oh, with Lord this? Have mercy, the one that's on. Is it on what? It's on one of the plans in Netflix. I want to say it's on Prime or something. Prime. Like that. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I saw that it was there and refused to watch it. Holy shit. Holy yeah. Holy shit. That's a good way to say it. Yeah, uh, what a freak athlete, a great wrestler, like a great pedigree this guy's got, but just an absolute maniac. Yeah, there you go. That's one way to say it. Um, well, that was that was a fun episode, and what a hell of a way to end it. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming. Up, I need a new co-host because Marcus has then lost his, his rocker in an episode like that. What is wrong with you? Weird innuendos. We're going. We're talking about Teddy Hart and cats. That's now. That's in my opinion. That's the right way to end it. I so. don't know. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you leave him one more at the end. Oh my uh, god. And you guys will get your chance. Uh, well, so in, in two weeks we're going to be back with another uh, episode, either exploring. Do not miss it. Yeah, or maybe we'll have a guest on. I don't know. Uh, but be back in. We're two working weeks. on that. And then in four weeks we're going to be back Let, with another Murder Hawk mailbag. Let me ask this question. Ooh, a question. If, Ladies and gentlemen out there in the world of professional wrestling podcast listeners for the 10 people that are on ours right now, hoping to get the thousands and millions, who would you want to see us? And 
logically and logistically possible, join us. If you've got an opinion and you think of somebody, let us know and we'll see if we can make it happen. That's right. Don't be coming on here asking for Donald Trump or yeah. uh, <laughs> or Ric Flair. We might be able to get Flair. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Your, your I don't have. I don't have that kind of money. So. <laughs> But anybody within reason, okay, Taylor uh, has got a great suggestion. Your friend Taylor, oh, Lord, how about Taylor. Teddy Hart? Listen, Taylor, What's you're that? no. I'm I'm getting a new song tomorrow. <laughs> that is how you end the show, and uh, <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time right here. Peace out, guys. In the Hawks. Next.